Welcome back to HBO or the PvP Live Studios in Frisco, Texas. I'm Tanning Grace and I'm joined by Nathan, that's Admirable Zamora. We're about to move into game three here between Caldi and Muzzy. They're tied at 1 1, and uh, you know what? Who do you think is really at advantage? I think Muzzy's at advantage, and I know you've got Caldi in this. Yeah, I mean, I think Caldi's going to win this one. I don't think it's going to even be a contest. <laughs> uh, you guys can voice your opinion, though. We want to know what it is. Head out there on Twitter, use that hashtag HPL, tag PvP Live in the comment, and let us know who you think's got the advantage. Also, head over to Facebook, like and comment over there. We're going to be checking out some of your opinions after the show and uh, see. Make exactly sure you let him know. Think. Make sure you let him know just how wrong he is. Oh, guys, no, I am not wrong. This. Tannen's wrong in this one. But <laughs> game three is getting underway right now. Caldi versus Muzzy. One of these guys looking to take a decisive advantage in this match. It looks like Muzzy's going to switch over to Grim Patron Warriors time, and that is a Harrison Jones in Caldi's opening hand. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, kind of when you see Big Game Hunter pilot Shredder Harrison Jones, you get the impression that uh, he's trying to target something a little bit like this, but also trying to keep it a little bit safe with something like Big Game Hunter. Make sure that if Harrison Jones isn't able to be utilized to full effect, that he's got some sort of late game to pick to pick off spots in that as well. We'll go on a limb and say this is a Druid deck from Caldi, but it could be very, very wrong. Uh, it looks like Druid to me. Those are three very Druid-y cards. Yeah, I think I saw Wild Growth get added to his hand. It was very quick going across. Yeah, I mean, Wild Growth, always a welcome sight in any of your hands. And with the Emperor Thorson, Wrath, and Ancient Allure, got some good stuff to go with him. Unless he's got a Harrison Jones in his deck as well, but it's not going to be good this game. Yeah, this Harrison Jones is going to be a 5-4 at some point in time. There, there's a very good chance you might not even see him play it because the middle of the game just gets kind of gummed up a lot here, and you're just trying to look for huge advantages and big swing turns. Well, Booty Bay Bodyguard without taunt is not a very strong minion uh, in this matchup. But Cali's got no action this turn on turn uh, 5, so that's going to be good news for Muzzy. Um, I would venture to say that Wrath on this is something that he wants to do, but is he going to be drawing a card or is he going to be taking that straight away? Yeah, he's going to go ahead and take care of this because his mana is going to be very, very... Very used up the next couple of turns. He's got a Druid of the Claw, an Emperor Thorson, and an Ancient of Lore. Just a great curve here from Caldi, looking like he might take this game quickly. Yeah, no way to uh, squeeze in any extra hero powers in this. And Muzzy under, kind of understands this matchup, too. I like this Frothing Berserker play from him. Against Druid, you often just need to get something on the board and get it rolling, but Caldi's got a great check to this. I would love to see yeah, him just charge this Druid yeah. of the Claw straight into this Frothing Berserker. Don't let it get out of control. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some crazy, crazy games with Frothing Berserker. We've seen a lot of 30 zeros, even from Caldi, the infamous Shades game. You know, he went from zero, zero things on the board into 30. Uh, I think it was against Jab. He just 30 Jab out of nowhere and just yeah. fell out of his chair. Love to see Charge coming back into action. We don't see it all the time. Uh, Muzzy's got a great answer to this, though, with the death fight, but Caldi's going to be the first one with an Emperor Thoris on the board, but with Coin Emperor Thoris on Muzzy's hand, looking like he's got a great position, too. Yeah, just a, oh, Harrison oh Jones drawn. Oh my gosh, a huge draw from Caldi right now. Going to completely disrupt Muzzy's strategy and get an extra card in the meantime. His curve is looking fantastic in this game, and he's got a way to check out for Thorson right now. So Muzzy, I mean, it looks to me like he's going to be forced into just playing Harrison Jones to try to contest this. Well, it, it matters. You could still play Emperor Thoris on this turn. It kills the Harrison Jones. If you get one... Uh, trigger out of it, you still get this Gnomes Avenger, this, this Warsong Commander, and this Warwand, and this Grim Patron cheaper, and you can really start to push from here, though. If he had something like Frothing Berserker in his hand, I think it's a good place to still play your Emperor. There's a chance that he doesn't do it from here, though. I mean, may need to just dig into his deck a little bit more and find the right cards to couple with Harrison Jones before he decides to do that. Now, and now this sends a message to Caldi that he's looking for something specific in his hand. So what you might see from Caldi here is a push for damage, plus something like, you know, Ancient of Lore drawing cards, just looking to combo him out as quickly as possible yeah, from I, here. I would say at this position, what you're looking for is just ways to continue to push damage. So I personally would love to see Ancient of Lore and then this five damage head over to the face. Don't worry about controlling this minion so much because you're just looking to kill him in this matchup. You are the aggressor. Yeah, you know, we talk about this all the time in these spots. You see Caldi favor trading with minions and killing minions. I would love to see him get really aggressive here, but you're going to see him just pick off the snow machine. I'm going to play a little bit more defensive. Uh, that seems to be the way his style works out very often. And Muzzy, start, his hands starting to look a little bit heavy, but, uh, you know, this turn in particular also doesn't look like a strong Emperor Thorson turn because yeah, he's got to couple it with Whirlwind. It's not a strong Emperor Thorson turn, but if he wants to, he can Gruel Taskmaster to kill the Harrison Jones plus coin. Harrison Jones of his own, um, Harrison Jones of his own, to kind of check this Ancient of Lore, and he's at least getting forward in that match. But you know, I I'm not sure I love this Emperor Thorson here because if you're going to make this play this turn, why didn't you do it last turn? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with digging for the right answers. You know, the fact that he's found this cruel Taskmaster now, going to look to really push some damage here. But Caldi, 
He's the one on full offense right now, has a wonderful hand to continue well, to combat you know, this. The more I think about it, the more I don't hate it for Muzzy because it, it makes Caldy trade into it. If he's going to, you know, eat your Gnomish Inventor, you know that if you play this Emperor Thorson, you're going to get the trigger out of it, and Caldy's not going to push for damage here. He's going to kill your Emperor. Yeah, well, he's down to 20, and he's got 14 points of damage sitting on the board right now, and the Emperor Thorson trigger. Muzzy needs some major action if he's going to turn this game around. But Emperor, Th I'm sorry, but Grim Patron, that's a very good start to doing this. He's going to be able to make a very big board this turn. Yeah, you're going to see this cruel taskmaster come in, make two grim, make a second grim patron. His whirlwind's going to make two more after that. Yeah, but how does he trade after that position? You know, he does have to be worried about the amount of damage potential that can come in from Caldi in the coming turns, and he's going to need some excellent ways to take yeah. care of this board pressure. Savage Roar has to be on your mind from here. Yep, and with this many minions sitting on board, I mean, he's going to be forced to trade basically every single one of these grim patrons. After this, he's always going to get to pick up an extra. Well, that's a very good minion yeah. to uh, to be seeing on your side of the board. But once again, he's going to be investing all of his minions into this board position. He's going to end with uh, a three three grim patron and a three one grim patron. You know, not necessarily the most comfortable spot for Muzzy, uh, for Muzzy after this. No, but at least he still has something going on. Do you know what I mean? Like, if Caldi doesn't have a ton of things himself going on here, uh, you, you're, you're actually starting to pull ahead in this game. And, you know, I like this play from Muzzy because he can't do anything else. Like, he has to do this from this spot to try to win because if he just keeps sitting there and trying to set up a perfect turn, Caldi's just going to beat him down. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. He doesn't really have the time and the liberty to be dividing up his, uh, yeah, his great time here, here the way he wants well. to, but Caldi just going to have very clean answers to what's going on. Wrath on the first Grim Patron, Keeper of the Grove on the second one, and he's not worried about a 3-1 Grim Patron. It can't get damage to make another one, so Lothip going to be his play, and he's going to look to start once again pushing for a lot of damage. Muzzy, not any clean answers to what's going on either. Yeah, he's got the second Warsaw Commander in his hand, but he doesn't have any of the, the combo pieces with it. He doesn't have another Grim Patron or a Frothing Berserker. Again, this Harrison Jones, like I said, might not even get played this game. It's going to be just a brick his hand. You might see it this turn, along with something like Dread Corsair, and really start to, you know, just try to mount any kind of offense that he can get going. You might see Armor Smith. There's a couple other things he can do. He can he could get aggressive with Warsaw Commander, Armor Smith, Dread Corsair, and really start to push. But, you know, you have to feel like this game is slipping away. It just doesn't have anything going. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And, uh, you know, just not strong plays at pretty much any step of the way. Uh, four mana Dread Corsair is not the way that you want to be playing Dread Corsair. Yeah, that's what other not why it's in your deck. Yeah, <laughs> but what other real options does he have? He needs to start taking out minions and uh, is trying to get the better of them. Yeah, he's going to pick off this guy. You, you know, I like picking off the, uh, the Keeper of the Grove there. It's kind of free for you. You don't get, really get super punished. Or, like, swipe would be bad, but it's how are you going to beat a swipe from the spot anyway? Yeah, I mean, it looks like Force Nature is just going to be such a beautiful turn for him here. Going to Ancient Lore and get a little bit more information first. Ooh, a Kizan Mystic. You know, Muzzy has played a decent bit of Mage. Well, now that he's picked up Force, uh, Savage Roar, he's still going to use Force Nature anyway, and I love this. Just the fact that he's grind, ground Muzzy down to this position, he knows that Coin is still in his hand, so he's free to make the trades as he wishes. And, you know, at this point, how does Muzzy get back into this game? He has no way to draw cards. Harrison Jones is completely dead in this spot. There's, he's there's facing no card. down 10 yeah. points of damage. There's no card you can draw from here. Deathwing wouldn't be bad. <laughs> Deathwing wouldn't be bad, but, <laughs> I mean, that's in his deck. That would have... Frothing Berserker would have been good last turn. It could have maybe had, like... You know, a pretty big turn making a gigantic Frothing Berserker and, you know, get a lot of, you know, just a big threat on the board against Caldi, make you react from there. But, I mean, yeah, it looks like he doesn't even want to show this Harrison Jones, let Caldi know that he has that possibility in his hand. And Caldi just going to continue to build his board and make big pushes. He's, you know, at this point, he's almost invincible in this game. How does he lose in this board position? Muzzy would have to draw something like Brawl or Deathwing, really, to, to get this board position back under control. Caldi's going to keep strict. Yeah, uh, you can never let this Frothing Berserker sit on the board. Caldi knows very well from firsthand that crazy things can happen from here. I'm just going to keep his permission here. And uh, Muzzy, though, I mean, you know, he's seen keys on Mystic at this point. I would love to see him just take his time and try to get as much information he can from Caldi. You know, maybe he's got, maybe he does have a brawl in his deck too. That's another benefit you get from not conceding in these spots is you put your opponent in a position where maybe they're fearing uh, a brawl at this point, so they continue to play around that. But Savage Roar going to be more than enough damage to end this game, and Caldi's going to take a 2-1 lead over Muzzy. Yeah, great stuff here from Caldi, like completely understanding this whole matchup. Muzzy never really got anything going. He had a couple of really big room patron turns, but they were mostly defensive. He had to do it to clear Caldi's board and then never got to really push forward from there. That's what you really need to be doing with this deck is pushing for gigantic turns that kill your opponent, not defensive ones. Yeah, defensive plays are not where you want to be with this deck. It's all about offense and finding those big combo turns. The fact that he was pushed into playing from a defensive spot, that's how you want to beat this deck is force them to take action earlier than they would like to take action. If you guys want to see exactly how that was done by Caldi in this game, you can head over to pvplive.net and check it out for yourself. Full recaps, stats breakdowns, everything you need to know about the strategies they
they chose and how they played them. So now these guys are once again making changes to their decks. They can change anything they want between games, whether it be class or whether it be cards. And when we come back, game four is going to be getting underway. Cowley's on match point and Muzzy's going to need two straight. Don't go anywhere, guys. You're watching Hearthstone on PvP Live.